previously on Savannah. They look good together, don't they? Yeah, I think so, too. Cassie, I like you a lot. But? I just can't get together. Sam is married? You mean put part of what I own into items that don't leave a paper trail? Diamonds, gold coins, cash. Then put it all in a safe deposit box Eleanor and her lawyer know nothing about. Not everything in a marriage is to be shared. I couldn't agree more. You've got the key to the box, don't you? Right here. This looks like an impression from a key to a safe deposit box. Why don't you just tell me what you'd charge to make the copy? One grand. Safe deposit keys aren't supposed to be duplicated. She's a liar, thief, and a scoundrel, and deserves everything we have in store for her. By the power vested in me by the state of South Carolina, I now pronounce you man and wife. Okay. Oh, you're not married to her. It doesn't matter what name she gave. The woman who took the vows is the one who's hitched. Peyton's married to Tom. I had this drawn up last night. It's a codicil to my will. Nick is not going to get a damn dime. Mr. Corelli? Mr. Corelli! I'm sorry. We did everything we could. Nick Corelli, you're gonna be a very rich man. At the very least, Peyton can be charged with forgery for signing your name on the marriage certificate. And with the testimony of the minister and his wife, and this snapshot is evidence, won't take much to convince a judge that your sister and Tom Massick perpetrated fraud specifically aimed at attaching himself to your fortune. We're talking larceny on a grand scale. You're certain I'm not legally married to Tom? I'm positive. Thank you. Reese, we should press charges immediately. I can start the paperwork in the morning. No. No pressing charges, no paperwork. I'm gonna handle this my own way. And I'm gonna enjoy every minute of it. Nick's dad disinherited him. I saw him sign the codicil before his heart attack. And now I can't find that paper anywhere. It wasn't in Martin Corelli's hospital room. It, it wasn't with his belongings at the admission desk. I mean, the only other place that it could be is in his hotel room. But I can't get in there to look for it. Maybe someone already found it and mailed it. Sugar, I am trying to think positively here. If that happened, Nick would be penniless. Well, there is a silver lining. Yes? So if Nick is worthless, well, he's always been worthless, but if Nick is not rich... <laughs> And there's no reason for you to move in with him. And you can stay right here with me. And your wife. How perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's Reese? She's working hard, making money, ignoring her poor love-starved husband. Oh, <laughs> you poor baby. Mm. <clears throat> oh. Honey. Home. Yeah. Well, I would have been home earlier, but a problem came up at the office. It took me forever to figure out a solution. Well, don't apologize for working hard. Oh, no, I want to apologize. You know, I've been spending all my time worrying about earnings and dividends and accumulating wealth and not focusing on the things in life that really matter. Things that really matter? I'm going to start focusing on being a good wife. Well, I think you're perfect just the way you are. I hope you're hungry because your wife is going to start things out with a special dinner. A special dinner? Oh. <laughs> a very special dinner.
Yum, yum. All right. Mm -hmm. mm. That looks good. Wow. Well, I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Oh, I'm not hard to please, honey. You don't have to worry about your cooking. Oh, good. Because you wouldn't believe the terrible story I heard at the hairdressers. I was talking to a friend who had been married for 11 years. Mmm. Mmm. And she left her husband the other night, and you know why? Mm. He never liked a single thing she cooked. Can you imagine that? Mm. For 11 years, she cooked his breakfast, his lunch, his dinner. He never said one nice thing, <laughs> not one kind word. And all I wonder is what took her so long to leave that insensitive jerk. I'm so glad you're nothing like that awful man. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want anything like that to come between us. Mm -hmm. I could never treat you like that, sweetheart. Look at you, hungry husband. Mm. Does it really taste all right? It's, uh... It's indescribable. I'll get you seconds. <laughs> My dearest Martin, this letter is so painful to write. As much as I thought I loved you, when I came face to face with Nick yesterday, I realized I was still in love with him more than ever. I don't know where I will go or what I will do, but I do know living with you would be living a lie. Please forgive me, Martin. It's Sonny Lee. Yeah. Hello, Nick. It's Sunny Lee. It's not too late, is it? No, no, I was up. I need your help. What's wrong? It's your father's things. At the hotel? I tried to gather them up to send them off, but I just couldn't. Each time I touch something of his, I... I even had to get another room at the hotel. I just can't go back to his. No, 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 don't. I'll take care of his things later tomorrow. You just take care of yourself, all right? Nick. Yeah. Thanks. That's no problem. I'll call you when I've finished. Okay. Goodbye, codicil. <laughs> hey, good morning. Good morning. Where are you going? Oh, I have to interview someone for an article for the weekly about waitressing in Savannah. What's the matter? I didn't sleep a wink last night. Sam? Mm-hmm. Can't figure out what I did wrong. Ah, oh, it's not you. It's him. You think? I know. Why do so many guys end up being jerks? You got a problem with your answer machine? I got home late. I didn't want the phone to wake Jason. What's so important? 
Robert Weber called the station after you left last night. Said it was your father-in-law. You married? Not anymore. Funny, he didn't say ex-father-in-law. This is personal. It doesn't concern you. Well, it does if you're dating a friend of mine. Does Cassie know? It doesn't concern her either. The hell it doesn't. Look, Robert Weber called to tell me that his daughter, the woman I was in the process of divorcing, is dead. Does that make you happy? Does that put your mind at ease? These are their garment bags. Mm -hmm. Now, I know of no one who makes them any better than this. Just look at the detail on this bag. I, look at the lovely tapestry. It is gorgeous, but it just doesn't seem like it'll hold much. Well, how long a journey are you planning on taking? Very long. Well, in that case, why don't we look at some steamer trunks? Ah, trunks. What a marvelous idea. Right this way. There was no reason in the world to put our jewelry in that safe deposit box. My paste copies are better than anything that Harlot has ever worn. This is the third time I've read the same paragraph. Will you please give it a rest? Please. Stella doesn't like it when you're testy. Do you, Stella, sweet? Yeah, you don't like a big dog, do you? You little rat dog. Veronica only needed to be caught with $2,000 worth of stolen gems to be charged with a felony. Eleanor, dear, a $2,000 felony would just give Veronica a slap on the wrist and a year's probation. And that simply will not do for what that woman has put me through. No, sir. Veronica Keslowski's gonna be caught red-handed with a half a million dollars worth of our family jewels. The judge is gonna lock that horrible woman up and throw away the key. <laughs> Burton here. Mr. Burton, Marshal Davis. Mr. Davis, it's the private detective. Is Miss Kozlowski on the move? Well, she's been shopping. Shopping? Luggage, lots of it. She's buying luggage. What else? Well, she's in the travel agency as we speak. A travel agency? Travel agency? Oh, my, this plan's working perfectly. Now, she's been driving the travel agent nuts. Seems she can't decide between Switzerland or Rio de Janeiro. Ah, oh, well, if I know Veronica, she'll pick Rio. De Janeiro? Good Lord, they don't even have an extradition treaty. If that two-bit talk gets away, she's gonna be tanning on the beach wearing nothing but a thong bikini and your mother's ruby ring. <laughs> Veronica Kaslowski will get no farther south than the state pokey. Well done, Mr. Davis. Hey, I'd appreciate it, Deke, if you'd handle the funeral arrangements down there in Texas. And you'd know what he'd want better than I would. Right. Thanks. I'm gonna pack up his hotel room and uh, send you his things. Sonny Lee's gonna stay here for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again, man. Well, Dick's gonna handle the funeral. Why isn't Sonny Lee packing up your father's things? He's too upset. I'm gonna go to the hotel. Pack up her stuff. Oh, Nick, I'll go with you. No, no, you don't have to. Nick, I can imagine that packing up your father's belongings may be hard for you, too. I just want to help. Come on. All right. And what are your customers like? You get them all, from the 90-year-old great-grandmothers to the 17-year-olds with the bad fake IDs. Mm -hmm. They never get through. To ones like the guy at the end of the bar who orders a drink and then just stares at it. Excuse me. Sam. Elaine. Hey. What are you doing here? I'm researching an article. Um, tell me that's a sarsaparilla. Scotch, single malt. Sam, come on, you've been clean and sober for six months. I've been thinking about this drink for half an hour. Hmm. Now, weren't you the one that told me that thinking about drinking was just an excuse for not thinking at all? Not thinking sounds pretty good right now. What are you trying not to think about? How I killed my wife.
What is it? Nick, what? My dearest Martin, this letter is so painful for me to write. As much as I thought I loved you. We have a lot of work to do. You write it. I'll go take the bathroom. Would you just think this over? I've done all the thinking I need to do. I had this drawn up last night. Sent me by express mail. What is it? It's a codicil to my will. Nick is not going to get a damn dime. Savannah will return after these messages. Cassie. Sam. Are you going to invite me in? You caught me at a bad time. I'm lucky I caught you at all. You talked to Lane? Yes. I haven't had a drink, if that's what you're worried about. That's one of the things. I'm sorry for the way I've been acting lately. You don't owe me an apology, Sam. And you don't owe me excuses. What do I owe you? Respect. I respect you. Oh. Turning away, not calling, not trusting me. That doesn't show respect. I married Anita when I was 21. We met on the force. We used to joke about being a cop family and how all the kids we were going to have would be cops, too. I couldn't have been happier. About a year and a half ago, she came under investigation by Internal Affairs for taking bribes. I told everyone that's bull. There's no way Anita would do anything like that. And then one day, she asked me to lie for her, to give her an alibi. The whole thing was true. She was uh, on the take. What did you do? I told the truth. Watched as they handcuffed her and let her off, cursing me the whole way. She went to prison. I filed for divorce. She died in Juliet. Last week, killed by another inmate in a fight. Sam, I'm sorry. I could have saved her. If you had lied. Now she's dead. But it wasn't your fault. I never meant to hurt you, Cass. I just needed some time alone. Time alone is good. Too much time alone is it? Honey, my underwear. They're in the top drawer. I got a chance to do laundry last night after you fell asleep. But, but everything's, uh, pink. Oh, well, I accidentally mixed your stuff up with my red sweater. Sorry. Did you wash all of my underwear? Yeah. Hey, only you and I will know about it. It'll be our little secret. I can have something to visualize all day. <laughs> What's that? Breakfast. Wish I'd never written it. Why did you? You read it. Yeah, I want you to tell me. I realized that I didn't love your father the way that I love you. And I didn't think that it was fair for me to stay. 
I was gonna mail him the letter from the road, but he walked in on me as I was packing my bags to leave. And when I told him how I felt, he, uh, he begged me to stay. He said that he would do anything. Finally, I just, I had to get some air. You know, I felt like I was suffocating. And then when I came back, he was lying on the floor and Peyton was doing CPR. I'm the reason your father had a heart attack. If you wanted to leave, why were you so all fired anxious to marry him at the hospital? He asked me to. He was dying, for God's sakes. I felt responsible. I would have done anything to make him feel better. I know how much you hated your father. But he was nothing but kind to me. Well, there's nothing you could have done about my father's heart. I didn't have to be so damned honest. You know, I didn't have to tell him that I still love you. Sally. But I did. And now, thanks to me, you've lost your father and your fortune. You can't lose a father you never had. And you don't regret losing a fortune you never cared about. The only thing I ever truly regretted was losing you. I'm telling you, if Reese cooks me one more meal, I'm going to ask for an annulment. I'm telling you, that dear John letter that Sonny Lee wrote to Nick's father was a phony. A phony? It was meant for Nick to see, not Martin. And what makes you say that? That's what I would have done if I was her. Well, she's not in your league. She's smarter than she looks. I found this floating in Martin Carrillo's hotel room. Somebody tried to flush this, only it floated back to the surface. What is it? This pretty little plastic arrow pointed to where Martin Corelli was to sign the card to sell disinherited Nick. The only reason why Sonny Lee wrote that letter was to trick Nick into believing that she loves him more than she loves Martin. And the only reason why she'd want him to believe that would be to get his money. And the only way she could be certain that Nick was to get the money would be to destroy the car to sell before she wrote the letter. Well, she is good. Yeah, but I'm better. Thank you. Uh, no thanks. Hey, why don't you take some of this, huh? Sorry. I ran out of room on my desk an hour ago. Well, you're mighty damn chipper today. Well, I'll tell you, yesterday the glass was half empty. Today it's half full. You know, I'm not always good at saying it, but uh, I appreciate all that you've done for me. Yeah, that's what friends are for, huh? Edward Burton here. Mr. Burton, Veronica Kozlowski just entered the bank. Ah, don't you let her out of your sight. My dear, the game is afoot. Savannah will return after these messages. Arrest me for, for what? Why, for stealing from our safe deposit box, of course. But 
There must be some kind of mistake. <laughs> this is mine, and, and I thought it was guaranteed a private cubicle. There have been some serious allegations, Miss Kaslowski. Make her open the damn box. What would I be doing with your safe deposit box? That seems to be the $64,000 question. She's trying to steal my valuables. She got her hand caught in the cookie jar. Open the damn box. No! Open the damn box. I can take you in the box downtown, and you can have your attorney present. But sooner or later, you are going to open it. Game, set, match. Edward, you don't want to do this. Oh, yes, I do. Personal records and journal. I love keeping a journal. It's great therapy. Journal? People I've met, things they've done. This is a copy of a check paid out to you from Senator Burden. That's a lot of money, Senator. Let me see. Jesus, Mary and Judy. That was for buying me out of second chances. He's so generous. For charity, no doubt. Yes, dear, of course. Uh, here's another one, made after Rita Winsler. Yes, I believe you recognize the name. I do. Well, he bought her off so she wouldn't testify against him on those uh, sex scandal charges. That's a lie. You didn't write this check? Well, of course I wrote it. I didn't write it so that she wouldn't testify against me. It's interesting how that Winsler woman left town so suddenly. Very interesting. Lieutenant! Uh, what's this? Oh, that is the shell casing from the bullet we used in the fake assassination attempt that Edward stage. Veronica! Stage! That explains a lot. This woman is crazy. It's all in the book, Lieutenant. You're crazy! The uh, illegal contributions, phony deals, the um, <clears throat> torching of the riverboat. You burned the riverboat? She's trying to set me up. It's pathetic. Isn't that the pot calling the kettle black? May I borrow this? By all means. <sighs> Senator, why don't you join me in my office downtown? I have a few questions for you. <laughs> And as for you, don't make any quick trips. I want you around for questioning as well. Oh, Lieutenant, I wouldn't dream of not being around for this. I want the key to the box, Edward. I don't know how I let you talk me into this in the first place, but I am taking our jewelry and putting them in my safe deposit box down at First National. One you don't have a key to. Some people are so suspicious. You're crazy. afternoon. I uh, wish I could, but I have work to do. All work and no play. <clears throat> Can I help you? My name is Jim Bridger, Mr. Corelli, from the firm of Buchanan, Almack and Perkle. I've flown in from Dallas to discuss your father's will with you. Um, I should leave the two of you alone. No, stay, please. All right. Have a seat. Say what you have to say, Mr. Bridger. <laughs> right to the point. Just like your old man. Tell me something. How much did he tell you about his business before he died? On a scale of one to ten, zero. Mm. That's what I was afraid of. Well, the truth of the matter is, Mr. Corelli, you stand to inherit roughly $40 million in assets. Well, that's, uh, that's quite a piece of change. But? But. <laughs> There's always a but. You've also inherited some liabilities. Liabilities? Your father liked to take chances. Some paid off, others didn't. What's the bottom line? By the time you pay off your father's creditors, the IRS, two outstanding lawsuits, and a whole army of attorneys, you'll be lucky to net $25,000. What? I'll be damned. You mean to tell me my world-famous, up-by-his-bootstraps father was really a lousy businessman? Let's just say he liked to live on the edge. Yeah, on the edge of failure. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> Nothing your father ever did surprises me. I must say, Mr. Crowley, you've taken this news very well. Easy come, easy go.
That bag looks heavy. Get away from me, you low-life reprobate, before I report you to the police for harassment. Oh, I wouldn't be so quick to call the police, Eleanor. Last time you did that, poor Edward got dragged downtown. Don't think for one moment that this is over. Eleanor, When please. I'm through with you... Can't we just be friends? I didn't <sighs> come here to harass you, Eleanor. I came to offer you a deal. A oh, deal? Well, a trade, actually, for that purse of yours. What could you possibly have to offer me that's worth more than these family jewels? How much is that dog in the window? Woof, woof. You should have been the one to die in Joliet. Thank you. Luggage? Are you leaving us suddenly? An emergency came up at home. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, well, I hope that you've told Nick that you're leaving because this could look awfully mysterious. I mean, he might think that you're leaving because he inherited a pile of debts instead of a fortune. Oh, Nick told me about the visit he had from Mons Tony. So? You know, I bet once you're gone, Nick's gonna begin to wonder whether that goodbye, I really love Nick letter that you wrote to Martin wasn't really a bunch of lies. You know, set up. Nick knows me better than that. <laughs> Sugar, Nick doesn't know you at all. But I do. You don't love Nick. You never did. You only wanted him for his inheritance. Only now he doesn't have one. So you leave him. Oh, don't tell me. You're in love with Nick. How quaint. You want him? He's yours. <laughs> don't flatter yourself. He always was. Yeah, I'd like to be connected to Sonny Lee Barrett's room, please. One moment, Thanks. please. Sorry, sir. Miss Barrett has checked out. Checked out? Yes, sir. You're sure she didn't just change to another room or something? I'm certain. Would you like her forwarding number? No, no. No. It's okay. Thanks. That's all. You're welcome. Have a nice day. Sonny Lee didn't even stay for dinner. Well, I imagine you made quite an impression on her. Well, my mama always told me that I would have made a great lawyer. Uh, somehow I get the feeling the only ball you could have passed was a closed one. <laughs> great job, Ernie. Worth every penny. Well, thank you, darling. Oh, thank you. Savannah will return after these messages. Oh, my goodness. Hey, surprise. I, uh, took off early, you know, I, I thought that I would uh, help out with some of the cooking for a change. And after all, I'm a sort of a liberated kind of guy, and I can read a recipe book as well as you can, right? Grace? Oh, honey, what's wrong? What's wrong? I'm a failure, that's what's wrong. Failure? What are you talking about? Oh, just like my friend whose husband hated her cooking. Oh, I don't hate your cooking. I'm just trying to pitch in, that's all. I'm a failure at everything. The cooking, the laundry. I've ruined everything. So I have pink jockey shorts. <laughs> you know, it's a big deal. And pink dress shirts. My dress shirts? <laughs> and your silk suit. Really? 
about it. They're just things. Oh, you just hate me, don't you? You must hate being married to me. Now, that's ridiculous. No, it isn't. If we hadn't been drunk, we never would have gotten married. And if you had it to do all over again, you'd never marry me. Sure I would. You wouldn't. Our marriage is a sham. We should just end it right now. Please, no, come on. Now, don't talk like that. You'd never marry me sober. Is that what you think? Because if you do, then we'll just have to get married all over again. Do you mean it? Absolutely. We'll go down to the Justice of the Peace right now. No. We want a real wedding. One our friends can attend. If that's what you want. More than anything in the world. You pick the date. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> If I ever get my hands on that Keslowski woman again, I'm gonna torture. That's what I'm gonna do. Torture. Bamboo slivers under the fingernails. Dripping water on the forehead. The rack. I'll hire professionals. Yes. Ooh. Luckily enough, we can challenge her journal easily. Although I'm gonna have to scramble some to explain those damn checks and that damn bullet casing. Lord, it's gonna cost me a fortune in attorney's fees. Damn that woman. Eleanor, dear, you did bring the jewels home safely, didn't you? Better pour yourself another drink, Edward. Never knew she was on the tape? No, not until she told me. Other people thought I was the dirty cop. And I never took a nickel in my life. I believe you. Got pretty scary at work. Other officers didn't trust me. I knew as long as I stayed in Chicago, I'd always be under suspicion, so I left. So, what do you think it means? I think somebody's here from Chicago to get me. Get you? Kill me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. She's great. Local? Yeah, Cassie Wheeler. She's not only a great singer, she's a great lady. Oh. She's single? Yeah, but she's pretty serious with a guy already, and you wouldn't want to mess with her. He's a police detective. Well, I'm not afraid of policemen. So where are you from? Chicago. No kidding. So is Cassie's boyfriend. Really? Yeah. I think I'd like to get to know both of them. Strange couple of days. Well, I'm, I'm afraid I've got some more bad news for you. What? Well, you've been saying that you don't care much about your daddy's money, so I can imagine what a relief it was to find out there wasn't anything to inherit. Relief isn't the word that comes to mind, but go ahead. What's bad news? I'm afraid you might not be as poor as you think you are. How so? Bridger, the lawyer that came to see you. Well, he's... Wait, 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 wait. Don't tell me, don't tell me. 
He's not my father's lawyer, is he? He isn't anybody's lawyer. The only tort he's ever handled is lemon tort. And you hired him? Yes. Why? Because I wanted you to see what kind of woman Sonny Lee was. I don't remember asking you to be my protector. I mean, who put you in charge of my life? You did. Come again? You asked me to move in with you, Nick. You said that you couldn't imagine a better roommate than your lover. Well, when you care about someone, you look after them. Man, I was looking after you. I see. Are you angry that Sonny Lee went away? Because if you are, there's a surefire way to fix that. Pick up the phone and call her. Tell her you just won the lottery and see how long it takes her to come back. I bet she sets a new world record. And how do I know you're not just like her? I'm here, aren't I? Yeah, because you think I'm gonna be rich. As far as I can see, Nick, you got about as much chance of being rich as you do being poor. I'll take my chances either way. Either way? Yeah, I'm a gambler. So am I. So when can you move in? Stay tuned for upcoming scenes from the next episode of Savannah. Every young woman dreams of her wedding day. Marry me. Are you serious? It's the happiest day of her life. Sugar, we are finally going to be fabulously wealthy. But things aren't always what they seem. How do I look? Positively radiant. What happens at the altar of this wedding? If anyone here has good reason why these two couples should not wed, will shock the South. Speak now or forever hold your peace. The two hour season finale of Savannah next Monday. rich people. What do they have that you don't? Cool digs, for one thing. Now you could change that by winning a mansion for a whole week in Savannah's Mogul of the Mansion sweepstakes. The WB will fly you and any three friends you need to impress to Georgia for seven indulgent days in a mansion, fully staffed with your very own name on the door knocker. Just watch Savannah next Monday for the special 800 number to call and enter the Mogul of the Mansion sweepstakes.